Praise the peace of Christ be with you. Today is a Thursday, the 14th of the month of January 2021. Um, another privilege given us to begin this day with Christ, in Christ and for Christ. We live not for ourselves, but for him. He who has made us, he who sustains us. I am here and you are here, we are here. For Christ wills it. As usual, we are presented with two readings. The first from the letter to the Hebrews. We read from chapter 3, 7 to 14. Then the gospel, a continuation of the gospel of Mark. We are still in chapter 1. We'll be reading today verses 40 to 45. We want to pray. We pray with Acts 14, 28. It is in you, Lord, we move and have our being. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Lord, you've made this day the 14th of this month, very special for us. It is not like any other day, as you've made each and every one unique. So you've made this day unique. We want to move in you. We want to live and abide in you. As you grant us this opportunity, grant us this privilege to witness how special you've made this day so that none of us may miss the glorious opportunities you lay bare for us. We pray through Christ our Lord. Amen. Beloved, let's quickly look at the first reading, the letter to the Hebrews, chapter 3. I want to draw attention to these words, which are very touching. Take care, brothers and sisters, verse number 12, that none of you has a wicked, unbelieving heart, so as to turn away from the living God. Therefore, encourage one another every day as I am doing each morning as I try to do. As long as this day lasts, so that none of you is hardened by the deceitfulness of sin. For we have become partners of Christ only if we keep the grabs of our first covenant to the end. Verse number 15. In this saying, if only you would listen to his voice today. How many times within these verses is, is the word substantive today mentioned? Encourage one another every day, as long as today ends. Then, today, do not harden your hearts. Every wonderful, every day is a wonderful opportunity for man to encounter blessedness because God blesses each day. We know as Christians that Sunday being the day of the Lord is unique because we believe it as the day that Christ overshadowed his light, overshadowed darkness. He came out of the tomb. But the Lord has also made each day so different and unique like our lives. Our imprints are not the same. None of us is indeed the same. And that is how God makes each day. The past year, 2020 January, we had a day called 14th of January, 2020. Today is 14th January, 2021. But these two days are not the same. Indeed, if each day was the same, then God would have put all the things we needed into a kind of one basket and laid them laid them at our, our, at our doorstep and say, oh, everything you need, for, for your subsistence, your life, I'm giving you to do this day. He knows what we need for each day, so he prepares them and grants them to us. So I love this song as we read in Lamentations 3, I think verse number 22. The steadfast love of the Lord never ceases. The steadfast love of the Lord never ceases. His mercies never comes to an end. They run new every morning, new every morning. The steadfast love, the faithfulness of God. God's mercy is renewed each morning because each morning is unique and different. So don't miss that day. Don't harden your heart today. Encourage one another as long as this day lasts, not to harden your hearts. Not to harden your hearts. Beloved, in the gospel, from Monday, we've seen the movement of Jesus. You see how, 
how I've been drawing your attention to this fact of his movement. Last Monday, 11th, Jesus in Mark 1.15 launches the kingdom. Repent and believe the good news, Mark 1.15. Right after inaugurating the kingdom, he moves beside the lake of Sea of Galilee and chooses four people, Peter, Andrew, James, and John. The next morning, we read Tuesday that Jesus is in the synagogue on a Sabbath where he encounters a man who was possessed then he, he, he cast out the demon. The third day, the church makes us read Jesus, that is yesterday, in the house of Peter and Andrew, where Jesus moves close to Peter's mother-in-law, touches the woman, raises her, and the fever leaves her. Today, Jesus is still within the regions of Galilee. What happens? He heals a man with leprosy. Mark presents Jesus in Mark 1, when you read the gospel, chapter 1. We have told you that today we are reading chapter 1, 40 to 35. In chapter 1, verse 21 to 34, Mark presents Jesus in Capernaum. So Jesus dominates, controls. He manifests his power in that region. Then when the disciples had found him praying, he tells them, let's move to the other villages, so that I may proclaim the word, for this I came. Jesus moved to the other villages not only to proclaim, but to subdue and tame the evil spirits that existed in those areas too. I've told you the efficacy of the word, the power behind the word that he carried. Indeed, when you read St. Mark, St. Matthew's Gospel, I think in chapter 8, verse, chapter 8 or so, Matthew always Hence, at Jesus healing with the power of the word. So he moves to proclaim the word and the power that emanates from this world is what casts out demons. The power that comes from his word. So Mark presents Jesus in one chapter. Look at the miracles, the healing and exorcisms Christ has performed in just chapter one of Mark's gospel. All in the region of in Galilee in Capernaum and the villages around Capernaum. This man with leprosy, we know in the Old Testament, a, lepro, a man with leprosy or person with leprosy was, was considered unclean. But he realized that Jesus' present in, presence in that region was his day. Was his day. Like these days, somebody who has an opportunity, let's say, a very important figure in the, of the world is passing by your village. The Pope comes to visit some, some of us in Ghana, or the Pope comes to visit your city, wherever you are in Europe, and you are told that the Pope is passing here, he will be making some stops in house number this, house number that, house number that. And you know that that street where the Pope is passing will, will, is where you abide. You choose that opportunity to. To take a selfie with the Pope. It is a day, a chance not to miss. This man with leprosy, after Jesus had declared that he has to go to the nearby villages to proclaim because he knew that there were problems there. He knew that there were people tormented there. He comes and lo and behold, this man with leprosy says, wow, this is my day. If people consider me unclean, I'll move to this man. He moves to Jesus. He said, Lord, if you will, make me clean. The leprosy leaves him. In order to be accepted back into society, Jesus tells him, go and show yourself to the priest and make the offering that is required as Moses prescribed. So Jesus takes the kingdom to those nearby villages, heals and restores this man of leprosy and brings him back because for him, nobody is left out of this kingdom. You remember that title, Prosdokomenoi, Kingdom Hopefuls. We can describe this young man as a kingdom hopeful. He knew he was impure. He knew he had leprosy. But something drew, you, drew him near to Jesus. For it was his day. A kingdom hopeful, a prosdokomenos, or not menoi, plural, doesn't take, doesn't joke with his time. Chances that comes before him, that come before him. He made that day count. He made his day count. For St. Luke, he calls today a day of salvation. 
So about six times in St. Louis Gospels, he draws attention to this day. When you read St. Louis Gospel, the first time in Luke, I think Luke chapter 2, verse 11, at the birth of Jesus, the, the angel appeared to, to the shepherds who were keeping watch over their, uh, over their sheep. He told them, the angels told them, today in Bethlehem is born. Today is born. For these shepherds, that night, that day, became a moment of salvation. They were not to miss it. So quickly, they moved to see the new king. Today, then in chapter 421, he goes to the synagogue. They give him a scroll. He read, the spirit of the Lord is upon me, quoting Isaiah 61. He has sent me to bring good news to the poor, to bring healing. Then he told them, today, what you are hearing is fulfilled in your ears. The today of Christ, the today of Luke, Christ brings that salvation. It is opportunity never to be missed. Then again, it's in Luke's gospel, we read, in chapter 5, 26, when he had restored the man paralyzed, the crowd said, we have seen great things today. We have witnessed great things today. In chapter 19, when he had gone to the, the house of Zacchaeus, he says, today I shall be with you in your home. Get down, Zacchaeus, for today I shall abide in your home. Today, this today is a today of salvation. Never to be missed. Finally on the cross, Luke 23, 43, the penitent thief. There were two thieves, scripture tells us. One on the left, one on the right. When the other was gone and mocking, making mockery of Jesus, the other one said, hey, have you no fear? Have you no fear? Because we deserve whatever is happening to us. But this man hasn't committed any offense. Then later he said, Jesus, Lord, when you come into your kingdom, remember me. Jesus said, you will be with me in paradise. You shall be with me in paradise. A time will come where I will, I will use the Greek word with me in paradise to give you a, a very simple but wonderful message. When all the disciples that left Jesus, Jesus finds in this thief a disciple because he chooses the disciples to be with him. But at the crucifixion, there was no disciple. So he tells this thief, you will be with me in paradise. Paradise is from a Greek word, paradisos, which means a garden, a royal park. And that's why it is interpreted to me the final place where Christians, those who please God, will go. Dearly beloved, today you will be with me in paradise. A day opportunity that not to be missed. So this thief does not miss that opportunity. But the other thief missed that day. He hardened his heart. Do not harden your heart as long as today lasts. But he hardened his heart. As a thief, like always, instead of asking to be saved, he was asking to be brought down. Save me and save yourself. He was asking to be brought down so that he could go back to steal. He was asking to be brought down when Christ was going up. Instead of aiming at things in heaven, he was aiming at things low that day. Beloved, the man with leprosy encourages you and me today, Thursday, that as long as this day, 14th day of this month, lasts, make sure you make good use of this day. Begin it in Jesus. Begin it with Jesus. Begin it for Jesus. Ask him, Lord, if you will, touch me. Lord, if you will, desire, purify me. How or what should I do? What should we do in order not to lose this moment of salvation, which we call a day, as long as the day lasts? Dearly beloved, I've said that the Lord comes to each and every one of us at the beginning of this day. Each day. That is why each new day is specially new, like the steadfast love, the mercies of the Lord. This man with leprosy moves to Jesus despite his impurity. It was a kind of religious thing. That was what the Jews believed at that time when you read Leviticus. But this man had the courage to approach Jesus. What is keeping you away from the Lord? Ask yourself as this day begins. What draws you so 
far? What takes you away from God? What takes you so away from, from God? What are the things, elements? That keep this distancing that you can't approach God. Have you asked yourself, have you sat down to ask, what really are the things that, that, that make me withdraw from the Lord? Is it fear? Is it unbelief? Is it unanswered prayers? Is it because of my sins, my constant sins? I pray to quit them. And the more I pray and ask for grace, the more I fall into these sins. You keep distancing yourself. Don't miss this opportunity, the opportunity of this day. Jesus is passing around you, very close to you. Cry to him that he may lay his hands on you. Have a blessed day, beloved. Amen.